Through the D&D series, we finally got a series dedicated to fantasy figures. But the series also came with a massive disappointment for me, the Ranger. Alright, I'm going to preface this by saying this figure is amazing and they did do a great job with it. But if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I love Rangers. But like, I love bows and hoods and capes and all this other cool stuff. Like, this is what I wore to a Ren Fair. And this figure just didn't really have any of that. We did get that new style of bow in a new color, which is really awesome. But because they made this a bird race, they really limited what they could do with this figure. So yes, this is all on me because, you know, I heard a rumor of a ranger and I was like hoping for one thing and we got something else. But I decided this figure wasn't going to stop me from getting the ranger I wanted. So I decided I'm going to turn a bunch of these D&D figures into rangers. So to start, I grabbed all my extra castle parts. It's a good thing I recently sorted them all. The first figure I wanted to update was the original ranger. There were two colors that stuck out to me on the torso, dark green and brown. So I started looking for some great dark green parts for this figure. Thankfully, that's my favorite color, so I have a bunch of them. Originally, I was just going to grab some like dark green legs, and then I found the perfect part. The rogue from series 16 has some great printed legs. I also grabbed a brown quiver, and after assembling all those parts, I got this figure. Honestly, originally, I didn't know if I liked the torso that came with the ranger, but after building out this figure, I definitely like it a lot more. After updating the ranger, I knew exactly what minifigure I wanted to turn into a ranger next. I love the forest dwelling vibe of the halfling druid, but what I like even more about this figure is the green on its torso. So I started looking for some parts that would go great with it. My first thought when I saw the torso was that the legs from the goat herder from series 25 would go great with it. So I grabbed those and the hood from the CMF rogue, plus a brown quiver and a dark green cape. For the weapons, I was going to give him a bow, but I'm going to give bows to so many of these other figures, I thought I'd mix up the weapons a bit. After putting all the parts together, I got my second ranger. I ended up giving him a hatchet and that new knife piece because I absolutely love it. When I heard we were going to get a ranger, this figure is definitely more of what I was hoping for. One figure I wanted to turn into a ranger is the warlock. And honestly, I didn't need to change too much. I started by grabbing the dark blue cape from the falconer. That cape is useful for so much. I then grabbed a satchel, and after that, I decided to make this figure an elf. So I grabbed the hairpiece from Griphook. I really like how this figure came out. The hairpiece is just perfect for elves. I also gave him the Prince of Persia dagger. I really wanted to give him the hood piece that was down, but it didn't work with the hairpiece. The next figure I rangerified is the Dwarf Barbarian. I really like the torso on this figure. I think it would be really good for Vikings or other barbarian hordes. I highly recommend getting the Fierce Barbarian to Figbarf with the Dwarf Barbarian. Swapping the arms between these two figures looks absolutely fantastic. I also noticed black goes really well with this torso, so I grabbed a black hood, black cape, and black quiver. And for the legs, I grabbed some dual molded ones. Putting those parts together gave me my next ranger. I ended up giving him a knife and the claw from Prince of Persia as weapons. I really love how this figure came out. Even though I already love this torso, the more I use it, the more I appreciate it for its versatility. The next figure I want to turn into a ranger is the sorcerer. Now, I'll be honest, there's really only one reason why I want to turn him into a ranger, and that's because I have a purple hood cape, and bow. I don't know why, but I love just trying to make solid color rangers. Like, I love trying to find the torsos that have, like, printing on it, and then find, like, a bow and hood that matches that color. With all that being said, I use those parts to make this purple power ranger. I'm, I'm sorry, I mean ranger. I end up giving the figure a black quiver to match the black on the legs. Overall, this figure actually looks really good. So if you're planning on making a purple faction, this could be a great figure for it. The next D&D figure I want to turn into a ranger is the Dragonborn. I found this Ninjago torso that will work great with the gold Dragonborn head. I then started looking for other white and gold parts to go with it. Alright, I'll be honest, I couldn't find the right pair of legs in my collection to go with this torso, but I did find some other great parts to go with it. Um, yeah, so I ended up not making a ranger and going down a different rabbit hole. Instead, I made this figure I'm calling a high dragonborn. He could also be a dragonborn wizard. I just love the whole vibe of this figure. After making these six figures, I decided, you know what, I'm going to branch outside of the D&D CMF line and make four other rangers. I started by grabbing two figures from series 24. The Falconer from this series is already almost the perfect ranger. I started by switching the arms on the Falconer torso to the other new Black Falcon torso we had gotten. I also grabbed a brown quiver and a dark blue hood to go with the dark blue cape. And voila, now we have a ranger for my Black Falcon army. I did give him a brown bow just because I felt like it looked better with this figure. The other figure I want to turn into a ranger from series 24 is the orc. If you don't know, I have a very large orc army, so I gotta make some rangers for it. So I shook the orc down just to the head and jaw piece. A part I've been wanting to use with the orc is the hair from the Blacktron Mutant, so I grabbed that. For the torso, I grabbed a Chima Crocodile torso and the legs from the CMF Goblin. I also grabbed the cape from the Mandalorian Battle Pack. Honestly, this is my favorite style of cape to use 
for castle figures. Finally, I grabbed the bow from Kate Bishop. I wanted something that looked a little more powerful for an orc. And after putting all those parts together, I got my orc ranger. This is one of my favorite additions to my orc army. I will definitely be making up more of these guys to fill out the ranks. Before I move on to the next figures, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button for more LEGO Fantasy content. I have already used the goat herder's legs for a ranger, but I have an idea for another one. One of the viking torsos matches perfectly with them. I also grabbed an olive green cape and a brown quiver and hood, plus a tan bow. Now I have a viking ranger. I do wish there was an olive green hood to finish off the look, but that might just be a little too much olive green. For my final ranger, I grabbed another viking torso. My goal with this torso is to make a dark archer. So I grabbed a black cape, black hood, and black quiver. And I grabbed the black bow from Hawkeye. And finally, I grabbed the legs from the vampire knight. Assembling all those parts gives me the dark archer. This figure would be perfect for a fright knight ranger. And now we have nine rangers for me to use in my fantasy build. And a dragonborn that was supposed to end up as a ranger, but didn't, but you know, just details aren't important. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these figures is your favorite, and if you'd like to see me turn even more LEGO figures into rangers. I will say this is why the D&D line is so great. It gives you so many well-detailed parts to build brand new minifigures from.